Lisa Bonzel, Senior Clinical Editor for Lippincott Nursing Center. I'm here at the 2022 Nursing Education Innovation Summit, and right now I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Desiree Hensel. Dr. Hensel is an experienced educator and researcher who earned tenure for her excellence in teaching at Indiana University School of Nursing before assuming the position of Inaugural Dean at Curry College of Nursing in Milton, Massachusetts. Now, as the founder and CEO of Hensel Nursing Education Consulting, she works as a consultant helping programs find pragmatic solutions to the many challenges of contemporary nursing education. Dr. Hensel, can you talk about leading innovative efforts to achieving continuity of education during the global pandemic? When I was the Dean at Curry College, we saw the pandemic coming. We spent our whole spring break getting ready for what we knew was probably coming down the pike. And in fact, what they did was they extended spring break one week, gave everybody that much time to try to figure out how they were going to shift everything online, let people come back to campus for one week, and then everything was remote. We decided that we were going to not piecemeal things together. Several of our um, other schools in the area were trying to figure out how they were going to come up with clinical education and they found a thing here, an activity here, an activity there and were trying to piecemeal everything together. But what we really thought was this was an opportunity for us to focus on clinical judgment. So we decided that we were going to approach clinical education in a very standardized way. We took the ACEs cases, the ACE cases from the NLN, they are wonderfully done, they're three part scenarios. We were allowed on campus for what was supposed to be a week and ended up being three days before we got kicked off. And we had faculty portray the actors and the, the nurse in these videos, one time take, nobody got a redo, and we did 27 videos to be the, the, the foundations of our clinical education. And I can tell you that there was some pretty rough stuff there. I mean, I'm a pediatric nurse and I haven't assessed an adult patient in a really long time and they had me assessing a stroke victim. So you better believe there was there were mistakes to be made. So the way it worked was students got the pre-activities that are associated with the ACE cases, they watched the vignettes, and then they debriefed using the clinical judgment model. After each session, students had to do some sort of authentic activity, whether it was write a care plan or whether it was write SBAR or look up meds, but those were integrated in the day. So we mapped out an entire clinical day based on the ACE cases. The three unfolding cases with all the pre-activities that were involved, all the debriefing, post-activities, including the reflections that needed to be written, and those authentic activities. We trained 50 part-time clinical faculty over the course of those three days. While well, we were down there trying to film these videos, I was, we were also upstairs trying to train faculty on how they were going to do online clinical education for, their, um, for the students. And what we found out was that we really did come up with a pretty good approach and for our clinical education, and that those 27 videos and that very standardized approach really started to have a lot of meaning to our students. So I think it was a very cohesive way that we went about uh, providing clinical education. In addition to that, like many other places, we did contact tracing for our school. We were part of the effort where our, our nursing students actually helped our health center make calls to students um, and as authentic um, contact tracing. The last thing that we did was we uh, had our partnership with Tufts Medical Center where our students could get clinical education while they were working for pay. So in those three ways, we were able to provide continuity of education during the pandemic. Congratulations on your new business. Can you tell us more about the need you are meeting for nursing education programs? So mostly what I've been doing is help with faculty development specifically for NGN, but I do other things for programs that have accreditation needs or programs that are trying to improve their pass rates. And so basically it's uh, finding solutions to help people when my philosophy is and I'm more pragmatic than rather than philosophical what works for one school may not work for another. Lastly, you are famous for your NCLEX review book and workshops on NCLEX preparation. What is coming for the next generation NCLEX? So we've been hearing a lot about it. 
And I just love how the National Council has been describing it lately, that it's a cheese pizza with pepperoni toppings. If you listen to Jason Schwartz, he's been telling you that NCLEX is still there. Think of NCLEX like cheese pizza. The cheese pizza bottom's not going away, but now it's got toppings and that's the next gen. So what's coming down the pike is we have an exam that is going to make it still testing about things that are entry level practice, but in a way that is going to make it much harder to pass the exam by guessing. We really want to make sure that students are thinking through these questions. Not only there are case studies that are infused in, everyone's going to have at least three case studies and some standalone items. But the case studies will have six questions with them. They will also include some new item types, such as drop and drag, highlighting, uh, matrix questions to help see if students are really answering the questions because they know what the material is rather than being able to just guess their way through a multiple choice question. The idea is so that you are actually graduating nurses and in are entering practice who really have beginning level clinical judgment and aren't just good guessers. Wonderful. Okay, let's hear about you. What led you to become a nurse educator? You know, I loved, I was a neonatal nurse for over 20 years and it was a career I absolutely loved. But there also comes a time in your life when you want to do something different. And for me, that different was giving back to the profession. And so I went into nursing education. And what I really loved about nursing education was the creativity that it allows you, that you can inspire in the next generation of nurses and that you could really start challenging the way things were. Um, I learned very early on not to say never. You tell your students this is the way it is now, but evidence is emerging every day. New things, there are always new things to learn and uh, you have to be a lifelong learner. So it just very much uh, fits my philosophy that you should always try to be growing and learning and I love learning with my students and from my students. Thank you so much.